Good afternoon and welcome to Markets Media Video. I'm Terry Flanagan, Markets Media Editor. And uh, Markets Media recently completed the 2020 Markets Choice Awards, which included the Internet Positive Change Award. Following up on the MCAs, we're taking a closer look at some of the charitable organizations that are partners with Incinet. In today's Positive Change Spotlight, Food Bank for New York City. I'm pleased to be joined by Bridget Palsik. She is Senior Manager, Partnerships and Campaigns for the Food Bank for New York City. Bridget, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me, and, and thank you all so much for the support that we've received. Great. If you could just give us a little background, you know, what is the story of Food Bank for New York City? How did it come into being and, and what is its mission? Yeah, so I, I love our origin story. Um, about 36 years ago, five of our member agencies and a member agency is a soup kitchen or food pantry kind of realized that if they pooled their resources, they would have a better buying power. Um, and that was how Food Bank all got started. Unfortunately, over the years, um, we have seen an increased need and even more soup kitchens and food pantries kind of stepping up to the plate. So at this point, we now have over 1,000 member agencies. So soup kitchens, food pantries in houses of worship, schools, senior centers, basically anywhere they're handing out food is where we like to be. Um, and we're in all five boroughs. So the heart of our operations is uh, through our Bronx warehouse in, Hunt, in the Hunts Point section. Um, and from there, food comes in, gets sorted, gets organized. We have an online ordering system where our member agencies can go in and pick out exactly the items that they need, um, whether that's fresh fruits and vegetables, lean proteins, whole grains, uh, place their order and food bank delivers it to their door when works best for them. So really working to meet the needs of individual communities by working with organizations that already exist and have a footprint in those communities. Okay. And what is the size or reach of your organization in terms of how many people you help on a given day or week or month? So we're still kind of figuring out what that, what that number looks like post-COVID, but pre-COVID, uh, Food Bank for New York City was serving 1.5 million New Yorkers every year. Um, we expect that number to be drastically increased this year, uh, but we'll wait until the year is out to kind of do a full assessment. Okay. And speaking of COVID-19, how specifically has that impacted your group and the folks that you serve? has impacted literally every operation that we have going on. So generally for our soup kitchens, Food Bank really promotes community meals, having the opportunity for everyone to come together to receive a prepared meal, but also enjoy it and eat it together. Um, and our pantries are usually client choice style, meaning clients can go in and pick out exactly the items that they need um, that will best serve their families. Because of COVID, we have rearranged all of our pantries, all of our soup kitchens to be to-go models. So meals are prepared, handed out at the door, and it's the client's responsibility to find a safe space to eat them. Um, pantry bags are no longer client choice. They are pre-packed um, and handed out at the door, but still providing enough food for every member of the family. Um, we have suspended volunteer operations. So normally Food Bank requires 800 volunteers a week uh, to get all of that food out the door. Uh, but in an effort to protect our clients, we suspend, suspended, excuse me, volunteer operations because we had so many new people coming in every day exposing our staff. Um, so we've suspended operations of volunteers. Um, we have set up new models for distributing food. So we now have pantry hours that are exclusively dedicated for seniors so that they can come in um, before the general public, before that exposure happens. Uh, we have drive-by pantries, so places where people can drive up in their car. A staff member will come out, put their pantry bags directly into their car so that they never have to interact with anyone. Um, we're working with partners like Uber and Amazon to actually do home deliveries of meals and of pantry items. So really looking at the nuances of this pandemic and how it's affecting people and making sure that we're still serving them in a manner that provides dignity and keeps them all safe. Wow, so a lot of changes there. Yeah, I, you mentioned some of your, of your corporate partners. Instanet, as I mentioned at the top, is also a partner. If you can talk a little bit about 
that and how that, that helps Food Bank for New York City and by extension, uh, the, the folks who you serve? Yeah, we're so grateful for Instanet and all of our partners, um, whether that's a corporation or an individual getting involved. First of all, it helps us amplify our message, so exposes us to new audience, gets the word out there, and maybe helps us friend raise and um, create new people in our network who are also dedicated to this work. But every dollar donated to Food Bank for New York City actually allows us to provide five meals to new workers in need. So whether you're a big corporation like Instanet and can make a bigger donation, or a single person, you know that your impact is that much greater when you're giving to an organization like Food Bank for New York City. Okay. As my final question, what is the vision for the future of Food Bank for New York City? Say after COVID-19 passes, is it several years out? What do you see as your vision for the organization? I think Food Bank is always working to find an end to hunger, but we know that that won't come just from an organization like ours. It's going to take government involvement and policy changes in a big way. So um, food insecurity is caused by poverty and economic imbalance. Uh, so we need to really uh, readjust the system that we're all living in so that it's more equitable um, and that people can access healthy foods and nutrition education where they live, um, regardless of where that is in our city. So our hope someday, very far away, is to put ourselves out of business, but that won't happen without the policy and advocacy work um, that we need from supporters like you all and, and just the general community. I've been speaking with Bridget Palsik, Senior Manager of Partnerships and Campaigns. Uh, Bridget for Food Bank of New York City. Bridget, thank you very much for joining us and, and explaining uh, what your organization is all about. Thank you guys so much again for all of your support and for having me here today.